how do you have a national identity and be able to call it that when you've got people who are disenfranchised, people who are disillusioned, people who are living in pain? Um, the Aussie battler is more than the traditional Aussie battler that we once would have spoken about. You know, they were the people who were trying to buy a house and trying to pay their bills and doing those things. The Aussie battler today looks pretty different. There is no single and fixed national identity for Australia or perhaps for any country, but particularly not for Australia. I think there's actually a disconnect between who we really are now today and who we might have imagined ourselves to be or who our parents might have imagined themselves to be part of in the past. The famous refrain of the song, I am, you are, we are Australia, and that's all about identity, isn't it? I think the most important factor in working or reworking, depending on the way you look at it, Australia's identity, is working towards some sort of semblance of truth. Because our history is a significant lie. Our national identity, such as it is, is an unfurling and becoming type of identity. It's shaped by what has come before, how that's been incorporated. It's shaped by the profile of who makes us up now compared to what it was then. And it's also made up of the sort of decisions we make. That idea of identity, which has been very helpful to us in lots of ways, because among other things, it helps us to accommodate the idea that we can come from diverse origins and can find a sense of ourselves in the eyes of others. At the turn of the century, the Australian flag was very important to people, but it was something that you put on a flagpole and you saluted. Now, increasingly, if you've noticed, the flag is something that you wear, you put on a T-shirt, and so it becomes part of you. And it can, of course, have an ugly side. Uh, if I'm wearing the flag, I can be gesturing towards other people who we think are not as Australian as we are. The average Australian these days is a person of the city and the suburbs. Uh, there was a time, I think, in the post-war period when the suburbs too were a place for pioneers. We built our own houses. That's less and less true. I think that the Australian battler now is likely to be somebody who's working in tech. So the connection between the virtues we celebrate and the way we actually live, I think, has become much more tenuous. So this notion of Aussie battler, I mean, um, who's an Aussie battler? The new Aussies, the new people who are welcomed into Australia and given their citizenship every year, they're an Aussie battler. If we're going to use that term, we're all Aussie battlers. Some of us are battling pretty tough over some issues. And, you know, the notion of Aussie battler, as I remember it growing up, was we help each other out. But maybe we're not that anymore. Maybe we've lost some of that notion. Alongside the notion of the Aussie battler came the notion of mateship and helping, I think. And that's something where I think we're struggling. National identity or national character, it's a really problematic thing. There's a wonderful historian, Tim Rouse, who once described national character as being like, in Australia, as being like an empty box. And in different ages, different politicians or activists have put different things into that box, depending on their ideologies and their politics and, and their purposes. And so it's deeply problematic because Almost anything can end up in that box and can then be used to make almost any political argument.
from the Indigenous Australians arriving here 60,000 plus years ago to Europeans coming here 200 years plus and then all the waves of migrants since. We're a fusion nation, so talking about a single national identity or national character just doesn't work because we're this wonderful, complex, rich amalgam. Each of those groups of migrants brought very different cultural impact into Australia and added to the combined culture and their combined identity of who we've made up to date. There's this wonderful contradiction in Australia that we present ourselves as this welcoming, tolerant, generous society, and yet historically, we have always been deeply resistant to the other and to others coming to our shores who don't look like what we perceive us to be. I do admit that Australia has done a great amount of work to welcome newcomers, but every now and then, regardless of how welcome you feel, you're reminded that you're different. No matter how much you've contributed, no matter how much you have sacrificed, that you are the other. You are different. That you can never be Australian. We don't need legal documents to tell us who we are as a nation. The Australian Constitution sets up the framework of government. It doesn't embody statements of national values or statements of national identity. It's a legal document designed to govern the framework of how government and state institutions operate in Australia, and no more. We do have this sense of what it is to be Australian. We do have this sense that we are all Australian. What it is that makes, makes us think that we are all Australian is a really complex issue, and perhaps it doesn't necessarily need to be fully articulated. Perhaps the idea that we do view, view each other as being fellow Australians is sufficient. I think there's something about our history as this sort of European enclave in the Asia Pacific from the late 18th century and how we then have to manage that tension, both in terms of our indigenous, original indigenous inhabitants, but also in terms of who wants to come here. When we look at the symbols that people celebrate today, like a celebrated type of nationhood like Australia Day, that's another imagined falsehood. So on this so-called Australia Day, 26th of January, we are celebrating the occupation of our territories around Australia, our collective territories, which is an insult, and that's why that date does need to change. Are we really that invested in the date itself? Can we not pick a different day as a day of celebration for who we are as a country, all of us? Utilise the date of January 26 to acknowledge the struggle, acknowledge that not everybody's come along on that same journey of achievement and that it's come at a cost. We can move forward together but where we kind of are at the moment is just sort of treading water in a place of pain and we need our country, our leaders of the country, our, our government, our politicians to actually take us on a journey that takes us through this into a place of healing. I think it's important um, what children are taught because it reflects this, this, uh, this desire about who we want to be. We can see a shift in curriculum towards Asia, towards Indigenous perspectives and so on, which suggests that we're starting to recognise a different place in the world for ourselves. Clearly, you know, there are sections of our society who want to claim still Australia for white people, and we'd call them neo-fascists or, or something. So the, the, there's an ideology there that remains, that what it means to be Australia is to be white. Lots of people say to me, why don't Aboriginal people just get over these things? Why doesn't non-Indigenous Australia just get over it and actually start to do the thing that they can do, which is acknowledge us and help us all move on together? I think it's quite important to have something that we all celebrate together. We've got to have something that everybody can put everything else aside and say, today we're going to do it together. I think the shish kebab is becoming uh, as much a part of the Australian fabric as a barbecue on the, on the uh, uh, a VB. My children's children will look back on some of those debates and say, what were you so worried about? What was all the angst over? You know, why were you so worried about some of these issues? You know, we sorted it out 
30 years ago or 40 years ago, and it just seems like it's part of the natural composition of Australia now. So we're going to look back on some of the debates that we're having now and just think that they're incredibly either shallow or, or foolish or mis misaligned or misunderstanding what people are asking for. One day we will advance Australia fair. <laughs> we're not quite there yet. That's why the Australian identity is such a moving thing, and it should be the product of us being willing to start anew and being willing to think about the new decisions we should make and the way we can shape ourselves. If you spend too long thinking that this is who we were and we should be that always, then you are crushing the human spirit, frankly.